know how that contra assume card could, part could be optional. You know, I mean, it's really missing if it's not there. I don't know why he says optional. In there. Maybe that was, maybe that wasn't Dvorak that said that. I don't know. So, you remember, um, maybe the first time we met, I was saying that like one of the dangers of this piece is that it gets sort of, like, just kind of all the same because everyone's playing, like especially in the first movement, in fact, and especially at the beginning of the first movement. Everyone's playing and the dynamics all kind of resemble each other and it can, it can all just get a little bit too concert band-like. And I think um, that sounds more critical than I mean to be, but I think we're still not quite as characterful, not quite as distinct as it could be. And I think the things that need to be more specific, let's start with dynamics because um, I'll really reiterate, whenever, like, if you try to make the difference between forte and a piano, the difference that you make as a solo player is much uh, easier than the difference you have to make if you're a quintet. And the differences that you make as a quintet are that much easier than what you make with this large group. In other words, you all have to exaggerate your dynamics much more when you are all playing. Because it all tends to average out, you know? So, you know, some instruments naturally are louder in forte, some are naturally softer in piano, and the overall just gets a little bit like mezzo all the time. Um, so I would say, you know, maybe as a guideline, when you're playing in piano, think of the oboe. Because the oboe has maybe the most the clearest, purest piano character. And also, it happens that in a lot of the piano sections here, she's leading anyway. So make sure that your pianos are below and balanced to the first oboe. And then when, you're, when we're getting into forte and then later fortissimo, the, the instruments that are not naturally as strong balance to the strong instruments, which here is mostly horns and bassoons, right? Uh, arguably the strings, because we have a good strong low string section here. But so, so you all, you upper, you, the black instruments, you need to put a little more grit into the fortes. And you all, non-black instruments need to kind of be more compact in piano. Particularly, forte to fortissimo needs to be more obvious. There should be a character, I don't want the forte to sound held back, but I think the fortissimo needs to really open, you know, when you finally get to that double forte. To me, it just, it sounded exactly like the forte, the fortissimo did. So, we start it again. It's much better, especially the piano. It had a real good character to it. Um, you know, even, even like the character of staccato can be slightly different between the two. So don't just try, don't like just turn up the dial, but actually have, have the character of piano be, be different from the character of forte. I, I also think that maybe it's not all that obvious as a listener the difference between no marking, this accent and this accent. They don't really sound very different the way you're playing now. And even these accents, like in the third bar, dum, ba -dim, pum, 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 pim, they're not really stepping out as if it was a different articulation. You know what I mean? It's not, it just sounds like some more eighth notes. I think, I think this fermata can be a little longer. You know, I mean, think about Ozawa. Ozawa rings for, I don't know, like a second and a half, two seconds. And, and they're finishing fairly strong. Yum, bum, bum. Bum, pee, da, dum. It, I mean, it's really the length of the breath you would take if you were playing that music with nothing before it. You know? Yum, bum, bum. Bum, pee, da, dum, ba, bum. Like very gentle 
uh, preparation as well as a gentle phrase. How about um, four before B? Four hours before B? Yeah. 